Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 73. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 160 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the bench just to talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. That's where you're going to find all the different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way. Every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So it is episode 73 of Keto on the Couch, which is now Keto on the Bench, but it's, still called Keto on the Couch. It's August. It is August. Can you believe that we are more than halfway through this miserable year? Well, I'm kind of thankful for that. Right. I mean, we're halfway through, but also... We're halfway through. <laughs> we're halfway through and you've got another half to go. So every day we just sort of have to rely on the Lord to just get us through each day. I'm mm -hmm. taking this thing 24 hours at a time, which is why our challenge for August is a 24 hour a day challenge. Yeah. And there's two aspects to our August challenge. Number one, which I'm going to let Rachel talk about, is just looking at each day as a new day and setting up what you're going to do for the day for the day. Yeah. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So I brought my napkin <laughs> with my things to do on it every single day. Just be conscious of that day. That's the only day we're planning for. A lot of times I think of goals in terms of where I want to be at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, if I do what I'm supposed to do every single day, I probably will fulfill my month's goal. Right. One day at a time. But this thing is one day at a time. Yeah, we have to look at this like it's an addiction issue because for us, is it is an addiction issue. We're addicted to maybe too many carbohydrates or too many sweets or eating too many times. So if we look at it through the you know lens of an addict, you take it one day at a time. Don't say like, I'm not gonna eat carbs for the week or I'm not gonna snack for the week because that's too far in advance. So instead we're gonna look at each day today I'm not going to eat before three o'clock or today I'm not going to have a diet Coke. Whatever your issue is, doing it one day at a time. Exactly. So my plan for today is, and I mean, I have a daily planner. Joe jokes about like how much he hates my daily planner. It's, it's a paper one. But a lot of times I will write in my daily planner, but there are going to be some days where I'm getting out of bed and I can't find my daily planner. What, what, what would say that again? You what? I can't find my daily you planner. Can't, but you can always find your phone. I can always find my phone. I'm just joking with you, So of you, you can put the list on your phone. That's right. But I'm saying if I have to reach out and I grab an old piece of junk mail, a, a piece of paper, or a napkin, we can still write our intentions down right that day, right at that moment. Mm -hmm. So today's list is I need to read a chapter in a book. Because it doesn't have to just be food goals, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes we get obsessed with our eating plan right. and we forget about other things that we want to do and feel successful in. So I already read my chapter in my book today. Yay. Don't eat until 5 p.m. So that's not every day. Right. Every day. That's just today's goal. That is today's goal. Don't eat until 5 p.m. today. But if you were to say, say I'm not going to eat until 5 p.m. for 30 days, it makes it look a lot more challenging than just, it's just today. And then if there's an obstacle, like I, I find out halfway through this month that I've got a birthday party or something that I need to attend and it will be before five o'clock, then I'm, I'm going to feel already flustered and let my guard down as far as my eating window the rest of the month. I just know me, right? right? But if you on that day say, you know what, today I'm going to a birthday party. So today when you wake up, say, I'm going to eat at one o'clock. Now you won't feel like a failure. Whereas if you set up your goal for, I'm not going to eat before five o'clock every day this month. And then on that day, you can't you're going to feel like a failure and possibly give up your entire month's goals. Exactly. So that's why we're saying day by day this month. Because I've done that. Right. I've totally done that. 
Um, do shipping before bed because I have a little bit of work to do. I'm not doing it right now, but right. before bed, get that accomplished. Okay. Um, tape keto on the couch. We're doing that right now. We're doing that right now. Um, drink coffee, water, and only one diet soda today. So I can have as much coffee as I want, as much water as I want, and I can have a diet soda, but limit it right. to one because I can polish off an entire case of soda if, if I'd like. No added sweetener. So again, this is just for today. Right. Don't add any sweetener to your coffee, Rachel. Just drink it black today. Right. Just today. Vacuum and or sweep the floor. You already did that. I actually did. Get up and sweep the floor today. So some of your goals, you can be an easy check. Right. I like that. You know, PE. What's my homework for PE today? Check that. Don't have any. <laughs> say something encouraging to someone else. Or, or I'm sorry. Say something encouraging to everyone I see. So I see you and you're looking very handsome today, sir. Well, thank you. Even though I've got a scruffy beard, I feel good. You look gorgeous, but you always look gorgeous. Thank you. So I can do this. So and let's talk day, about this now because this, this is, is what we're going to do. This is the second half. So this is day two. This is We're taping this August 2nd. Yep. I accomplished August 1st mm -hmm. and I've got $1 in here of change. This is a foreign object right now. This is this is prized possession. This change right now in right. America. But um, yeah, every day that I do that, I get a dollar reward. I think that's awesome. And this is what we're going to do. So this is this month's challenge. This month's challenge is... Write down what your goal for the day is. You can look at your overall month and say like, how do I want to accomplish my month by doing this? But we want you to focus on day by day by day. This way, if there's a challenge for the next day, you can change it to still fit to meet your overall goal. So we're going to use a baby goal to get to our overall goal. And then each day that you actually fulfill your goal, you're going to reward yourself with a dollar. Yeah. Or whatever. You could be a quarter. It could be a dollar. It could be five dollars. Hey, if you want, it could be a hundred dollars. Just make sure you come live with us while you're doing that. Yeah. I've got one more thing to add to my goal today. Okay. Don't get on the scale. Just for today. That's good. Don't get on the scale. Because I have a feeling if I stick to my goals every single day of this month, I probably will see something I like on the scale at the end of the month. And then here's what our plan is. And again, figure out what do you want to do with it. Yeah. Our plan is at the end of the month, if we have enough money in this jar between the two of us, we're going to take that money and we're going to go to like some kind of nice restaurant. Like I'm thinking like Texas Day Brazil because I have a coupon for there. And $62. $62 with our coupon would just about cover... A meal for us in Texas de Brazil Not where we can shabby. have a nice meal. So it's a great way that you can hit all your goals and then reward yourself at the end of the month. I love it. So let's talk about real quick. Uh, this week, the only deal that I currently know of is the flavor of the week for Keto Chow, which is going to be Root Beer Float. It's 10% off. Makes a good ice cream. Or, that's not my favorite. I know it's not your favorite. It's but not. it makes a really good ice cream. Link down below, as always, if you use that link, you'll also get an additional 10% off. So now- Which I would use you're to getting buy pistachio. You're, yeah, but you are going to get 10% off or of chocolate. Root Beer Float, and then another 10% off when you use our link. Or chocolate toffee. So, Either of those two. A few people actually have messaged us about the new Fat Snacks crackers. I have reached out to the company, asked them if they can send them to us. If Fat they snacks. don't send them to us, we're going to look to buy them. I just have to find them so that we can do a review of those different Fat Snacks. Because I do like crackers. crackers. Yes. I'm a crackers girl. So let's talk about our food that we had this week. Oh, before we do that, I came home, because Rachel's enjoying sitting out the chickens, to her making... I don't know what the proper term for this is. A hillbilly. A hillbilly. I, I don't want to offend anybody. So if that word is offending, we're not trying to offend anybody, but it was a makeshift pool. We mentioned That's a it kind word. on Facebook. And so some people wanted to see what I came home to. So this is what I came home to. Water is my best friend. I love water. I get hot easily. And I want to leave a place when I'm hot. When I am hot, I just can't even. So the next day I came home 
to we had gotten some 55 gallon barrel drums to start doing some rainwater collection. One of the drums has a complete lid that comes off. Most of them just have the little bung holes in the top. But Did this you say a bung hole? That's what it's called. That reminds me of Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> bung hole. So I come home to Rachel sitting inside of a 55 gallon drum that she's now filled with water. We have a 15,000 gallon pool that is just 15 feet away from the chickens. But I don't wanna be 15 feet away from the chickens and neither did my mom who actually helped me fill up the 55 gallon um, tote or tub or, or, or bunghole, whatever that was. <laughs> no, no, she helped well, no, me. the bunghole is the little screw tops on the top of them. That's fun, bunghole. <laughs> I'm gonna say that all day long, I love it. But yeah, so I do have a question though because I am going to all of these links right. to basically cool down. I have been hot our entire marriage and yeah. not like pretty. I'm saying like hot, like I get hot But you easily. are hot pretty too. Thank you. Okay. Um, but I would say, baby, I'm hot. And you would say, honey, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry you're hot. The chickens indicate that they're hot though. Mm -hmm. And you put in an entire misting system outside. Well, why not? So what's up with that? Well, first of all, you have air conditioning. You have not even mentioned the fact that even though my electric bill keeps skyrocketing, I have not said anything the fact about the fact that every day that I come home, I keep finding that air conditioner lower and lower and lower, and I've been leaving it for you. We've got leprechauns or something doing mischievous things around our air we conditioner. We do. I'm gonna have to start looking for them. So yes. I noticed we live in Florida and it is hot out. We've had some hundred degree temperatures. We lived in Florida before we got chickens though, son. I know, but chickens can't sweat. You can sweat. Also chickens can't take off their feathers. You can take off their clothes, which I would thoroughly enjoy for you to cool down. The chickens can't take off their feathers. So I put in a misting system. I got a bunch of little misters and we hooked it up to the hose temporarily, but I didn't even get to tell you this. I've got another 55 gallon drum. So what I'm gonna do is I've ordered a pump, which we're gonna hook up to the solar system that we're building. To keep them cool? And it's going to pump rainwater. So we're gonna collect another 55 gallons of water and then we're gonna put that down and then I'm gonna put it on a timer so that every day at the heat of the day, it'll turn on a misting system to help keep them a little cool. Well, I'm glad but I did put that you're a row, meeting their needs. I did put a row higher up as well so that you can sit in your chair and it will blow mist on you as well. That is awful nice of you to include me in, in, in their caretaking. <laughs> Do you want to talk about our food? Yes, before you get in more trouble. Okay, so obviously Tuesday... We had wings. I don't have any pictures of it. Tuesday, because we made that, or Wednesday rather, because we made that custard, mm -hmm. we decided to do a custard only day. Yes. And so this is what we ate, but we ate six of them a piece three times in the day. Yeah. Talk about a delicious day. And I do really like that recipe and I am a big proponent of making them in those little ramekins. I know it seems silly, but I am somebody that horks down food mm -hmm. and it really helped me to like eat that portion, go to the refrigerator, get the next one and eat it, then go to the refrigerator. And it was funny, by the time I got to like the fifth one, right. I was pretty full and you know that I don't get full easily, right. but it was, I was giving my body time to recognize that I was feeding it. Yeah, now if you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna leave a link for it over Rachel's head. So that, I wanted to talk a little bit about that protein custard thing. So we really did that to come up with a meal because yeah. we were in the middle of doing a protein sparing modified fast. And what it was, was one day we were eating high protein, low to moderate fat. And then one day we would eat high protein and very little fat, like less than 30 grams of fat for the day. And also it was much lower calories. So we're looking like, what could we have that's really, it's, it's very difficult when we talk about it in that video, it's very difficult to eat high protein with low calories and low fat because fat is in everything and it brings so much flavor 
So sometimes we found it challenging of fitting all that protein in. So that's what we came up with it as a meal, but it does make a really good dessert. And I, there have been lots of people putting suggestions on there about like browning up some, like putting a little bit of allulose on the top and then torching it. Yes, will absolutely work. Making a caramel sauce, putting that in the bottom and then baking it. And then you can make it like a flan or wow. a creme brulee. All of that will work with that recipe. We just did it as a meal, not as a dessert. But the nice thing about making it in those little cups is it will work as a dessert or you can do it like Rachel as a meal. Along with that, if you don't want to put it in the little ramekins, you can put it into a lot of things. You can put it into a mason jar. Oh, yeah. And put it, if you have the small little, like the little tiny jelly jar kind of thing. How fun is that? You could also, again, these are all things that we didn't talk about in the video, but people have talked about and like I know for a fact will work. You don't want to cook it in a hot water bath in the oven. Sous vide. Put it in a little mason jar. Put it in your sous vide. Same thing. 350 degrees. Let it cook. You can do it that way. Um, also, if you don't want to put it in little ramekins, as I was starting to say, you can put it into a big dish, like a, a low, shallow dish so that it can spread out. Just cook it a little bit longer, again, till the center is firm but jiggly. And then jiggly. you can have the whole thing if you want to eat it as a meal. Then on Thursday, obviously, we were doing the Redmond Fast. We were like, what are we going to eat before Something good. the fast? So... I smoked a brisket. Which I was very thankful for. And so this was a brisket that we had gotten at Sam's Club. And uh, yeah, we put it on. I put it on early. It actually cooked a little bit faster than I was planning because it was so hot. But it came out delicious. It really was. I wrapped it early. And uh, we put it on at like 5 o'clock in the morning. It was ready at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And we ate that brisket along with some of our coleslaw. Obviously Friday, Thursday into Friday, we fasted. And thank you so much to Redmond who, who trusted us to host that event. Like mm -hmm. that was such a nice thing. We had so many people from all over the country join us in that fast, including 1,384 so awesome. service people who joined us um, from military bases, including Camp Lejeune. Yep. Like, thank you so much for joining us with that. And I felt like, it just felt nice to, to be a part of that. And also it gave me the restart that I think I needed to refocus in August. Yeah. And I mean, we love Redmond products. And what I like about you can go everywhere to buy Redmond products. Some of the things they only sell on their website, but I like the fact that you can get it. A lot of local stores, you can get it on Amazon. If you do want to purchase Redmond products from directly from them, there's a link down below and we have a coupon code, which is 2CrazyKetos. It gets you 15% off. It also lets them know that you found them through us, which yeah. we greatly appreciate. So yeah, so we fasted on Friday. We mm -hmm. broke our, we actually decided to extend our fast because we weren't hungry. And on Saturday, we didn't eat anything. I did yes. have a soda in the morning. I had a soda in the morning. I had a diet coke. But we didn't eat any food. On my date with Anthony. And we broke our fast around six o'clock, which is, I don't even know how many hours we broke, we went. Yeah, so it was like 36. That's a lot of math. It's, it's what, about 45 hours. We went about 45 hours on that fast. We had our bone broth. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen that video, we make, we make a bulletproof bone broth. I'll leave a link over Rachel's head for how we break longer fast. And then what we broke our fast with, or after the bone broth, is not a great looking picture. It's ugly but delicious. But it was a hamburger that had cheese and bacon in it, some bacon, some of our homemade bacon, three eggs with some of the leftover brisket chopped up and put in there, and then a couple of slices of halloumi cheese. Which I got at Aldi. They're, they're having it. That's not something that I always see in stock there. It's expensive, but it's good. Well, I, it was under $4 for that the is block. That is cheap. Which was usually cheap. it's like 8 or $9 for a block of it. Because I usually would get it at Trader Joe's, and then, but I didn't always find it at yeah. Trader Joe's. And we don't always shop there because it's a little bit of a further jog for us to go and get it. So I was so happy to, to find it there i'm gonna have to go back if you've never had a lumi it's like a grilling cheese you can put it in a cast iron pan and it just grills it doesn't like melt melt no, it it's gets like, like a crust on the outside ooh, it's nice it's really good so we ate that and then afterwards we were still a little hungry so we got some just chicken some plain chicken breast we threw some fajita seasoning on top that we make 
and then uh, put that on the grill and then put that over a little bit of lettuce, a couple of tablespoons of salsa and a little bit of sour cream and just had like a kind of naked fajita kind of thing. A naked fajita. And that's pretty much what we ate for the entire week. Yeah, that was delicious. So let's get into some of our comments and subscriber of the weeks. Before we do, let's take a quick, quick, quick commercial break. We'll be back in two and two. And two. two. Well, welcome back, beautiful. <laughs> At least it wasn't two minutes, right? I hope not. Two and two. I hope nobody's watching a two-minute commercial on YouTube. If you are, sorry. Oh. We always make the commercials because they do have like automatically insert stuff in there. We always make them that you can skip them now. I'm right. never going to. You're never going to find on our channel where you can't skip it unless yes. YouTube makes it that you can't skip it. Right. But we're always going to like if you want to watch it and support our channel. Awesome, but don't feel obligated I'm to so do that. I'm so excited that that coffee didn't like launch across the room. You're not excited that I didn't spill my coffee and ruin my computer. You're just excited that we didn't have a waste of coffee. It's, yes, I cry over spilled coffee much more than spilled milk. Okay, let's talk about Subscriber of the Week. So if you're new here, we have a Facebook family group. Join it, it's free. Yeah, if you're not a member of it, go join it. It's free full of, I don't even know, over 2,000 people now. The awesomest people. Who like to encourage you, tell their stories, share their wins, share their struggles, share recipes. Tips. Tips, things like that. Deals. Because the whole focus of our channel is to be here as support. That's what we want to do. We want to provide support for people. And one way to support is by sharing your story because your story is going to inspire someone. We truly, truly believe that. Guaranteed. Along with our stories, we've also added in another thing and that's a an awesome post of the week. Is that, what are we calling this? Well, I mean, I think just like a help with perspective. Okay. Well, we need to come up with a name for this. Let us know what, what this it? segment should be. Should it be like the awesome post of the week? Should it be like the perspective? I don't know. We need a name for this for this part. We have the, the subscriber super, of the week. We the have the super comments. Mega ultra encouraging post. I'll never remember to say that. Okay. This week's came from September. So September put this post up and it said, How is it that the peanut butter that is only peanuts, which and salt, which is the brown one? Um, is a higher carb than the one with the added sugar, which is blue. And see, here's the thing. If you look at this, when you look at the ingredients of the brown one, which I don't think you can see in this picture, I know what it is because we've bought that. It's peanuts and salt. The other one has uh, vegetable oil in it. It's got a blend of like cottonseed oil, soybean oil, rapeseed oil, and it has some sugar in it. But when you look at this, it's going to be lower in uh, it's going to be lower in protein, it's lower in total carbs, even though it's the same net carbs, and it's got more fat in it. And see, here's the thing. What they're doing is they're adding in those other ingredients, which is watering down the peanut butter. And this is where the problem comes in with if it fits my macros. If it fits my macros, you're gonna look at those two peanut butters and be like, well, this one only has 10 more calories, but it's gonna taste better. Yeah. And it actually has less total carbs than the other one, so I'm gonna buy that one. But you're adding in vegetable oils and soybean oils, and you're adding in sugar, and so now what's gonna have happen is you're gonna have some inflammation from eating that for the same serving size. It's, they're watering it down. So the reason that you see that the one, that's why that one has more fat than the other one, but it has less protein. Right. When you look at the natural peanut butter, there's higher protein, less fat, because they're not adding in any fat. So they're watering it down. So you're better off, even though it's less total carbs, you're better off taking the natural one because it's more, even though it's more total carbs. Think about it this way. If you took coffee, Right, which I love. Take a big thing of coffee, mm -hmm. like say a 20 ounce cup of coffee, and you add in a couple of tablespoons of heavy cream. Okay. Whatever that comes out to be, a couple tablespoons would be 100 calories in one carb mm -hmm. for your 24 ounce cup of coffee. Yeah. That's awesome, right? Now, me, I want to be able to drink more coffee. So I'm going to take a 36 ounce cup of coffee. Okay. I'm going to add in the same two tablespoons of heavy cream. And now I've got much more volume 
And when I look at it for the whole thing, it would technically, if I went per ounce, be less carbs per ounce because it, I've added more water into there or right. more liquid into there. So all I've done is watered down the heavy cream. That's what they're doing when they add in those oils. So that's why it is so, so, so important to read those labels. It really is. It's not just the macros. It's the ingredients too. Now let's get into our subscriber of the weeks. We Yay. actually have two subscriber of the weeks. The first one is gonna be Dana. Hey Dana. And Dana said, today is our two year keto anniversary. Happy anniversary. My husband and I have lost 100 pounds each. Wow. I am off three of my five medications. My A1C went from eight to 5.3. Keto put my husband's autoimmune diseases in remission. Wow. My husband is back to doing triathlons. <gasps> And uh, along the journey, I was diagnosed with cancer that I believe keto helped me to find out about. I'm never turning back from the garbage I used to eat, still have the weight to lose, but feeling so much better. Thank you for all of your support that the group has given. Take a look at their picture there with Santa Claus. Wow. And then look at Dana's face. Oh my gracious. What a difference. And then look at her husband, you like amazing. beautiful people. Oh my gracious, what a change. That is awesome. And Congratulations, I, Dana. And I mean. And your husband. Absolutely, and you look fantastic, but what a health result. Yeah. I mean, I can just put the weight even aside to be like five medications down. Like being able to to battle cancer with like this amazing like new perspective, like wow. And that's why we always say it's not just the weight loss. No. I mean, keto is awesome for weight loss, but to me, the weight loss is a side effect. It's a side effect. Yeah. Because it's the health benefits that mean everything. Think about it this way. Listen, I'm up about 15 pounds from where I have been for the last three years but I still don't have any of the arthritis pain that I had before. I have so much more mental clarity. My blood pressure is good. My cholesterol levels are good. All of that is good. So if think of it this way, let's say you're 50 pounds overweight. Yeah. And you never lost any of the weight at all. You just stayed 50 pounds overweight, okay. but you got off of arthritis medication. You got off of blood pressure medication. You got off of cholesterol medication. Would you be upset? You found out about a cancer that you had that you didn't even know about and now you're able to work through it. Are you going to be upset if you don't lose the 50 pounds but all of the other health problems like got fixed? You may still have the health goal to lose the ultimately lose the weight, but every single day of your life, every 24 hour cycle would feel way different yeah. as far as enjoying your everyday life. So we do have another success story and this one is from Ray. And Ray wrote, I started keto back in February and it is one of the best choices I made for both myself and my family. In my six months on keto, I am down 87 pounds and almost to my goal weight. A little about me and why I chose keto. I have fought my weight most of my life to include my 21 years of active duty in the Air Force. Thank, Thank you. you for your service. Over the years, my weight has fluctuated up and down and at times almost cost me my Air Force career. Now a retired veteran and not being held to some type of military standard, my weight really got away from me the last couple of years. In February, I was the heaviest I've ever been. My whole body hurt. I was always exhausted. I was embarrassed to see old friends and colleagues go out with my and go out for, with my family. The list goes on. Does any of this sound familiar? It wasn't easy to start, but it does get easier. I am the only one in my house on keto, and I'm also the one that does the majority of cooking for my family. That can really that can certainly make it interesting. However, my family is very supportive and likes this new Ray. In addition to my 87 pound weight loss, I've been taken off my blood pressure meds and am waiting for my next physical to hopefully be taken off the thyroid medication. I'm no longer exhausted and have become a very active person. I now run or bike six days a week and have started lifting weights as well with my daughter who is an athlete. This is something I've never been able to do with her. Anyone can do this. There are certainly some moments that are tough, but this is possible. Advice that has helped in my success. Wow. Wow. Keto Ray, thank you so much for your service and for sharing your goal. And yes, this does absolutely resonate with me as far as my weight um, that had gotten out of control after I had had Caleb, especially. 
um, made it so that I didn't even want to interact with people. I actually did not go to my high school reunion totally because I didn't like the way I looked and I was embarrassed to be seen by people who knew me before I had gained the 100 pounds. It's such 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 an incredible story which is why we're sharing it and why we ask you guys to share your stories and again go take a look at the rest of the post because he talks about all of the different things he did incredible but do you want to see the before and after pictures? yes let's take a look at these wow oh my goodness okay so first of all you look incredible but i have to acknowledge that shirt embrace the sock <laughs> I love it. I love that shirt. But yeah, that's amazing. You look awesome, right? Thank you for your service. Yes. Thank you for sharing your story. We really, really appreciate it. Okay, let's get into some regular comments from Facebook. Okay. Or from our YouTube from last week. And Caitlin wrote, I was having a really rough day, but I was delighted to turn on your video. Thank you so much for making my day. Well, you just made our day, Caitlin. Thank you. And again, that is the purpose of our channel. The whole focus of our channel is to help you guys get through your day. So please, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're hitting the little like button. That's how YouTube shares our videos with yeah. other people to get the word out so we can grow the channel and help more people. So. When you hit the little like button and subscribe and leave a comment, those are the things that YouTube looks for and that's what will get them to share our videos and get more people onto keto. Yeah. Okay, so next one is from Terry. Terry says, not only do I admire both of your you sharing your keto ups and downs, but because of you both being so giving of your time. Wow, Terry, thank you so much. <laughs> wow, thank you for taking your time to encourage us. Next one we have is from Vicky. Hey, Vicky. Vicky said, LOL, I love this one. Joe is laughing at Rachel for shooting her own foot. I do it. Rachel's restraint in how many more times she could have said balls. Balls. And fantastic. Thank you both. We appreciate the humor. Bunghole. Because that's a new. That's the new one? That's a new Bung one. Bunghole. Bunghole. <laughs> Ready for the next one? Yes. Lucy. Lucy says, I made your chicken piccata with palmini noodles and a ribeye. Delicious. Ooh. Thanks for the recipe. Well, thanks for trying the recipe. That recipe is so good. And again, if you want to eat a large volume of food and you're eating a little bit lower fat, we're not telling you don't eat any fat because no. fat's going to help you get through from meal to meal. But if you're trying to lose fat, it's okay to cut back on that fat a little bit. Even if you're using chicken thighs, yes. that recipe is so flavorful. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link over Rachel's head. But it saucy. is so flavorful. Get saucy. And you can eat a whole bunch of it and feel good about it. I mean, oh, I love that recipe. I love it too. Next one is from Carla. Carla says, yes, Bones is great coffee. Rachel will love the toffee one. All right, I'm going to get that. We have not tried that one yet. No. We, we have had a lot of Bones coffee. We it have, is delicious. We, we've gone through two bags in the one week that we have. So we're going to have to order some more. We don't have a lot Is that left. an appropriate amount? We actually did have a couple copy, uh, comments about the bones because we asked what our favorite flavors are, what your favorite flavors are. So far, we like the macadamia one. Yes. The and, bananas foster. And the bananas foster. Those are our favorite two so far. So far. Karen said, chocolate orange is my favorite, but it's best iced coffee, which is what I do. Make a pot and put it in the fridge and drink it the next day. Karen, I'm absolutely going to do that because yeah, we've got the rest of the bag. We've to got use. an entire bag. I am going to make it one, another, well, I'll make another one as a hot because you're going to have to make it to get it cold right. anyway, but we bought it in the beans. Okay. And... Rachel didn't like the flavor. It smells awesome. It smells but she didn't, so But I'm, I'm going to make it stronger because okay. I had it set on three. So maybe if we up the, the up the strength of the beans or like the grinding, it'll taste a little bit better. That doesn't grind my gears. Mm -hmm. I'm all about making it stronger. So we're going to make it stronger, but I don't think I would ever buy the orange one again. But we're going to try it Let's try as it. the iced coffee. We may love it. Paige wrote... My favorite Bones coffee flavors among the ones I've tried so far are strawberry cheesecake. Ooh, we haven't tried that. And Highland Grog. So good. I really want to try the chocolate orange. Also, I love Rachel's shirt. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, we haven't tried the strawberry cheesecake. 
The Highland no, Grog. I'm try that. We like, that's what we're drinking right now is the Highland Grog. It is delicious. It's good. I, a lot of the flavors don't come through for me. I mean, they taste good, but it's not like. Just tastes like a really good cup of coffee. Like that Bananas Foster, the flavor punches you in the face. I love being punched in the face by coffee. Oh, I was going to say, don't, don't stop it at just, I like being punched in the face. Yeah. So Shelly wrote, hey, Shelley. so far I am loving Salty Siren. Ooh. I didn't even see the chocolate orange. Hmm, she I don't, says. We didn't buy the Salty Siren yet, right? We did not buy that we one We didn't yet. buy that yet, but I'm a Salty Siren. We're going to have to get that one on the next I'd one. I'd like some Salty Siren. Okay, so Melissa wrote. Hey, Melissa. I think the treats are good at first. When you were switching over, we were talking last week about like keto treats, yeah. right? But once you've gotten past the physical withdrawals and are becoming more confident, it is good to cut them out to work on the mental aspect. Yes. I do like to have some quick treats around for when other people have treats or they bring something into work so I don't feel left out. Yeah. And then end up eating something that I shouldn't. Although with social distancing, this is a great time to work on eliminating sweets since that really isn't an issue right that, now. That is such a great idea. I mean, when you're making your daily goals for the day, you could actually put on there, do not eat a sweet treat unless somebody comes to visit. It's a great or idea. unless you have a work colleague that brings in a treat to work and then that's when you, so you've set the bar for that 24 hours, that's when I can open a package. Right. So two things are gonna happen. One, if you don't come in contact with anybody, you are going to not indulge in a sweet treat and maybe break a habit of eating them every single day. Mm -hmm. And number two is, if you do want a sweet treat, no matter what, you're gonna invite somebody into your life and get to hang out and have a have a nice time visiting with somebody. Okay, next one is from Kathy. Kathy says, when I used to do the I only lost game, I started to think of the weight I lost in terms of butter. Because if I only lost a quarter of a pound, that's a whole stick of butter. If I lost two pounds, that's eight sticks of butter. So if you're playing the I only lost game, get in your fridge and actually take out how many sticks of butter that your weight loss equals and line them up on the counter and give yourself a pat on the back. The visual is quite uplifting to see just how much fat you have just removed from your body. I love this. When I read this, and I know we did read it because Kathy was one of the people who won the keto chow the other day. Yeah. And I love this. I love it so much that I brought out some butter because we talk, you see this all the time, you know, People see these stories like, I lost, even like me, I lost 80 pounds in six months on keto. I was abnormal. I also wasn't doing it right. Right. And I'm paying the price for that now because I didn't know what I was doing and I had, I was doing keto and severely calorie restricting. Right. We've been talking about redoing our video on how to get started on keto because I'm very different, I feel very differently now about it than when we first made that video. Because in severely calorie restricting, I had no place to go. Like at one point I was eating like 1300 calories a day. How do you lower Which that? is awesome, but how do you lower it? And which is why we ended up having to do a reverse diet to up my calories back up. So I'm kind of of the belief now that you should only be restricting like five to 10% off of what your overall thing, if you're gonna even do the calorie thing. You know, you can also follow the Dr. Berry method, which is you're only going to eat like beef and butter and sardines bacon, and bacon and that kind liver. of stuff once or twice a day and you don't touch anything else and you eat won't be able to eat want. overeat. But that's not that easy to not have anything else the rest of the day. Right. But a lot of times we see this thing from people like, I only lost a pound in two weeks. That's good, right? Good weight loss is a half a pound to a pound a week. Yeah. But when you look at it this way and you say, well, this month I only lost two pounds. Can you like kind of stand yeah. up on the bench a little bit? Think, no, kind of get up on your knees on the bench. Okay. And think about that much more on your belly. Yeah, put it on my sides. It's usually on my hips. There so you go. Two pounds. If you lost this, this, that's only two pounds. That's, that's only two, two pounds. pounds of fat. And two pounds of fat. And also, it's gone. It's gone. This, gone. Yeah. So even if it's only two pounds, but it's gone, 
How awesome is that? I mean, you think about it, I only lost a quarter of a pound, right? Seriously. So, so yeah, this is loose in here, but it's also not filled with this. This is what it was filled with before. So Kathy, thank you so much for that post because it really is a great way to look at you know, I, I only lost this much weight, but when you look at, I only lost four sticks of butter. Out of my butt cheek. It changes everything. Okay, next one is from Gail. Hey, Gail. Gail wrote, I grew up eating equal amounts of beef, pork, and chicken. I love chicken still. Thighs have always been my favorite. I never buy breasts anymore. Once upon a time, I steered away from red meat because of the standard American diet recommendations. Right. And now, having been keto, I love eating more beef and red meats in general. I love Gail. Gail, I just love you. She's she is so such awesome. an encouragement, such a great, great person. But yeah, I mean, things have changed a lot. But it's it's interesting to see somebody who had um, a balance of right. the different meats, whereas, you know, I only had beef, he only had chicken, and she had like an equal parts of all those. Yeah. Next one is from what is it, Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Cheyenne says, okay, where did y'all get the keto chow, chow container from the custard video? It's so much nicer than what I found at Sam's Club. Okay, so she's talking about these. These are better homes and garden containers. We used to get our containers from Big Lots, which I actually have to replace the ones we have for our like almond flour because they're broken. These are awesome. And we get them from Walmart. They're Better Homes and Gardens containers. I don't want to get chocolate keto chow everywhere. But what I like about them is it's got this rubber seal. And when you when you uh, like close this handle down, it, it puts closed. an airtight seal. The only thing I'm going to say with these is don't lift them up with this. Yeah. I've made that mistake on more than one occasion. Then you lose the whole container. You have to grab the container because this just does the airlock. It's not a handle. Yeah. So there's a bunch of different sizes. The one that you saw on that video, I forget how big that one is. That will hold like a bag and a half, almost two bags of keto chow. This is the one we really like because I can stack two on top of each other inside of my cabinet. This I think is the 11 cup one and it completely fits one bag of keto chow plus like two to three scoops. From so, the from the last bag. From the, from the last bag. So this <laughs> is the perfect size, I think. I will leave a link for them down below. We get them from Walmart. I've seen them on Amazon, but we get them from Walmart and they're pretty inexpensive there. Yeah. So next one is from Danielle. Hey, Danielle. And she said, proud of myself. Last Tuesday and Wednesday, I did a 48-hour fast. Today, I just finished a 68-hour fast. Wow. July 18th, I weighed 148, and today, I weigh 142. Well, congratulations, Miss Danielle Marie. That is awesome. That is a great job. Dude. I love that. I mean, just that consistency with the fasting. So good yes. for autophagy. Okay, so the next one is from our buddy Heath, and I just love Heath because he always wants to give a little bit of comic relief. He always makes me smile. And he put up a great post, just again, to give us a little smile in the middle of the day. And he said, a diet tip. Your pants never get too tight if you don't wear any. Porky pig it. Got a porky pig it. I think we should do that the rest of the day. No. No. Why not? No. So the next one is from Laylee. Hey, Laylee. She says, hi, all. I'm new here. I've been seriously doing keto for the last month, but played around with it in the past. Down 13 pounds in one month. Hubby is trying to be on board as well, but he adds a lot of sugars in his condiments. He can't eat a steak without A1 or have a pork chop without open pit barbecue sauce. And the man loves his ketchup. What are your favorite keto-friendly condiments, ketchup and steak sauce being the main ones that I'm interested in? I definitely know what he's going through because for me, I, prior to keto, was not a steak eater. Right. I was not a steak eater. I, like Rachel said, was primarily a chicken eater, an occasional burger, but if we went out to a restaurant that had steaks, I was never, ever getting, I didn't even get a steak if we went to like Outback Steakhouse. It was ribs right. or a burger. Is that funny? I was not a steak eater at all. Now I like prime rib. But when I did have a steak, I had to have A1. So it is very difficult because condiments so many times have so much sugar. They really do. You have to either make your own or get them. Um, these are the ones that I'm gonna suggest. There are other ones on the market, but these are some of the cleanest ones. So uh, we did recently for barbecue sauce, try the Sweet, Sweet Baby, Baby Rays. Rays. It tasted great. It tastes good. 
it's a little bit higher in carb than I'm willing to have. Yeah. I th- I, the one that, that I remember seeing was like four carbs. So if you want one that you can just run to the store, the next one that's, that you can get that I know is in most stores like Walmart would be G. Hughes. Not the cleanest ingredients in the world, but I, it's the next best one. Yeah. Like, and as far as flavor, I think they've got a lot of flavors and it does taste really good. So I'm, I'm okay with, you know, Sweet Baby Ray's for like July 4th because we're not eating it all of the time. Right. Um, but if you want a really good, super clean barbecue sauce, it's going to be Alterna, Alterna Sweets. Sweets. I actually have a big one. And if you've not seen this, there's a link down below, but the ingredients in this are water, tomato paste, blackstrap molasses, vinegar, non-GMO erythritol, butter, liquid smoke, spices, natural flavors, onions, paprika, garlic, stevia, red chili peppers. And this is five total carbs for a serving, which is two tablespoons. And then it is a gram of dietary fiber, two grams of sugar alcohols, making it two net carbs per serving. One gram of fat, one gram of protein. I really, really, really it like delicious. this. And the owners are awesome people. Ketchup wise, if you want the best ketchup, they make the best ketchup. Their spicy ketchup also doubles as the most fantastic cocktail sauce for shrimp ever. And their ketchup is tomato paste, water, vinegar, erythritol, sea salt, onion, spices, paprika, stevia, and garlic. And it's two total carbs per serving, one uh, gram of sugar alcohol. So it's one net carb per serving. Mm -hmm. If you can't find this stuff, um, the next one I would look at, 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 like Primal Kitchen makes one, but again, it's it's expensive as well. There are a few like no sugar added ones. Like Heinz makes one. Heinz makes one, which is like, I want to say like two or three net carbs per serving. And then there's another one that Anthony really likes. I forget the name of it. It's like a white label. I know you can buy it in whole in uh, Walmart now, and it's made with like different types of vegetables and things like that for sweetener. Yeah. Steak sauce. The only one that I have found that I think tastes any good is this one from Primal Kitchen. Yeah, and it is good. It's tasty. And this is uh, one tablespoon, ten calories per serving, one total carbohydrate per serving. So this is really good. I know you can get it at Whole Foods. It's the best substitute that we've found for A1. Yeah. But I will tell you this, as your husband switches over to keto, you will find more and more he doesn't need this stuff. Like Your palate will change. Your palate changes. And for me, like I no longer, I, I've got that. That's been in the cabinet for a year because I just stopped adding steak sauce to my meat. Now I just love the flavor of the meat, the flavor of the seasoning and the salt and things like that. Well, and the thing that I've noticed is it's not like A1 sauce is cheap. Right. So if you're like, hey, I've got like another four or five dollars in my A1 budget, put that budget into buying a better cut of meat mm-hmm. because that makes a huge it difference makes a huge too. Difference. Once we bought like a ribeye from Whole Foods, wow. Like, what a difference. What a flavor difference. You didn't even want, I mean, even the presentation of it were like, I'm not putting A1 on this just because look how beautiful it is and right. fatty. It's that helps too. Right. Okay. Next one is from Cassie. Hey, Cassie. Cassie said, I'm sure I'm not the only one that gets frustrated by the scale not moving as fast as I think it should. So I'm trying to look at non-scale victories more. For my entire life, I've had extremely dry skin with bumps on the backs of my arms. No creams or pills have ever been able to get rid of it. I've been keto on and off for the last year and since really disciplining myself for the last two months, I've just noticed this morning that my skin is almost completely clear. I wore a sleeveless shirt without feeling self-conscious. Wow, Wow, I am amazed. Wow, yes. The skin issues is it's it's amazing what keto does. Like Mm -hmm. amazing. No more acne, pimples. No more. I was somebody that always had acne. I always had acne on my forehead. Always. I had acne all in my hairline for my entire life. All of that is gone. I don't get the back pimples. Right. I used to always get back pimples. So yeah, I've even noticed I don't sunburn as easily across my face and stuff. I mean, now- And when you do, you're healing faster and turning tan, whereas in the past, Rachel would burn, peel, white. No, Burn, peel, white, and now she's getting more and more of a tan. Yeah, it's amazing what it does. Cause yeah, I recently got majorly sunburned when we were putting up the chicken coop. It tanned within only a couple of days. I didn't have the pain for that extended period of time. Right. And I didn't peel. Right. That was amazing. Yep. 
Okay, we have one more, and that is from Dawn. Hey, Dawn. She says, on the live show last night, I asked about dizziness and salt. Thankfully, that cured it. That's good. Also, wanted to let you know my blood pressure meds were cut in half today by the doctor. She was very pleased with my progress. Thank you to Joe and Rachel for being so helpful and kind. I love your enthusiasm and humor. Rachel, you keep me laughing. Joe, you are a wealth of info. You two work so well together. God is so good. God is so good. Thank you so much, Dawn. What We're glad an that awesome that thing. helped and that you had like such great results from your doctor and encouragement from your doctor. Now, if you didn't see what she was talking about, Dawn had put up a question asking about that she keeps having an issue of like bending over and getting up too quickly yeah and that she was getting like dizziness and lightheadedness and what we told her was that is almost guaranteed to be sodium and i know because i used to have that i remember it freaking out it was in the middle of lacrosse season when of course it was like really hot i was Am on I having a stroke right a, now like yeah i was on one of those uh astroturf field and i would bend over and as i stood up too quickly from putting the ball down for a face off I would get like lightheaded and be like woozy. That's frightening. And I had talked to a doctor about it and I was told like that is low blood pressure. You need to increase your sodium. And as soon as I did, as soon as I started adding more salt into my diet, it all went away. And that's what happens is, is when we're on keto, we think, you know, from the standard American diet, oh, we gotta not eat too much salt. No, you need more salt. You need more salt. If you overdo the salt, your body is going to let you know. Either A, you're going to start getting the runs, B, you're going to get bloated, right. or C, it's just going to taste disgusting. That means that you've had too much, but your body's going to, you're not going to overdo it. The worst that's going to happen if you overdo it is you'll start getting a little puffy, and then as soon as you stop for a couple hours, whoosh, it goes whoosh. Are you enjoying yourself? I love these things. Well, that is this week's Keto on the Couch, and we greatly appreciate all of you guys for sticking with us, especially if you made it to this point in the video. Yes, thank you. Now, if you do like watching these different Keto on the Couch episodes, there's 72 more of them, which you can check out by clicking that playlist right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you can find by clicking right over here. But whether you do that or you do that, make sure you do this. Subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week, bye. bye.